Amy. Hi, Iris. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I am also good. Good. Welcome okay. to Girl You Have Girl We oh, Have to Talk Podcast. There you go. Good for you. I was just not even going to say that. Hello, oh. everyone. I well, I forgot. So you mm. picked it up. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, what am I? Okay. It's an it's a question episode. Do you have anything to update on, or can we jump right into the question? Let's jump right in. Okay. So this one is called Accidentally Saw Insulting Text About Myself on My Mom's iPad. This weekend, I, 27-year-old female, was out of town with my family for a wedding. While I was with my parents, my mom brought along her iPad to give to me as she had gotten a new one. I was setting it up this morning, and I realized she had not deleted anything off of it. As I was deleting her text, I saw a number to a, a text to a number to who I believe was a photographer at the party saying, great pick. Can we get it cut in black and white so my daughter doesn't look as pregnant in the dress she's wearing that I that I hate yikes Mm. I'm not pregnant by the way for context my mom and I have a rocky history especially around body talk she's a workout fanatic and I'm well not I'm not overweight by any means but I'm not fit I have some insecurities around that and she's done her best to support me and love me for who I am but it makes me obviously very hurt that she would not only think that this think this but have the audacity to say it to someone we have had our differences in the past and are in a really great place so I know it would crush her to know that I saw this text. I'm not that I'm debating not saying anything, but also it's bothering me and festering in my brain. I just don't know if any good will come of bringing it up. I think it would just make her feel bad, which I don't want to. This text may have also been sent when she was drinking. Not that it matters or mm. makes a difference. Any advice? Oof. And she didn't say anything in there that this kind of thing like she didn't reference the relationship with her mom. Is she just talked about the specific text she saw, right? Well, she said that she and her mom have a rocky relationship. Oh, she did say that. Okay. Yeah, That's why that I was thing, trying to yeah, yeah I don't and that always things have been getting mm-hmm. better. Oh, oh. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't always hear things. That's why I'm asking to make sure yeah, okay. I got all of it. Yeah, so they have a rocky um, relationship mm-hmm. and things were getting better. Yeah. Her mom's really into fitness. She's not, but she's not overweight by any means. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently her mom thinks she is. Yeah. Her mom thinks she looks pregnant. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, I can totally imagine my mom saying this. I, I don't know if she would say that, but mm-hmm. like sometimes, but maybe like, to somebody else and you find out about it. Yeah. Like people like are so flippant about mm-hmm. things like that. It doesn't necessarily even mean that she would say like, oh yeah, like I think you look pregnant. She would just be like, oh, I think this dress is not flattering on you. And I, to have talked to people where like this is such a common mother daughter thing like not common in a good way but like I feel like this just happens so much that these moms say these things to their daughters and I think they say it to us like our whole not you I, like I don't know about you but mm-hmm. like two girls who this impacts like they say it to you from like such a young age that yeah. you're just always like it's yeah. in your brain it's in your brain now yes yeah and it's how you think about yourself mm-hmm. so Oh, yeah. I mean, I just think, like, there's no way to have, like, a, like a healthy body image as a woman. It just, does, like, doesn't exist. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think that – and there's no, like, good thing to say. I mean, I have some fit friends who – actually, like, my thinnest friends are the ones who feel, like, the most challenged, and which is interesting because I have some friends who are, like – To maintain it? that feel like um that seem to have the most vocal body image issues Mm -hmm. um I I don't know why that is but I think that my thinnest friends are definitely the ones who I hear you know refer to themselves as fat or like whatever way more than my friends who I mean not that it's a judgment but just like friends people who are just like very obviously thin Mm -hmm. tend to be the ones that I'm noticing are the ones who are constantly talking about this and like feeling really bad about themselves and maybe it's because like the rest of us not including you um but like people like me are just like so far like not so far but just like that's like I like obviously not then so like it doesn't Mm -hmm. even become like it's not even this object of talking about it I guess Mm -hmm. like I don't know Mm -hmm. the best way to explain that it's just like you, you you feel a little like of course you have your moments um lots of moments um or like, man, it would be so great to be thinner um, mm-hmm. if I could lose 10, 20 pounds. Um, but I feel like 
when you're so thin, I think it almost makes you, not so thin, but when you're a thinner person, I feel like that judgment against yourself is even more. Yeah, I, I, I think that makes sense to me. Um, it's hard for me to be objective about my own body. So I'm not even sure where I feel I fit in, but I'm mm-hmm. sure other people would have opinions about where I fit in. Um, but I, I, yeah, because I think there is something about maintaining it. And the reality is, is that there is so much advertising geared towards women's bodies never being perfect. Like there's always something you can find. Um, there's always something you can nip, you can talk, you can work on. Mm -hmm. Um, there's always a different diet that's better for you or a workout or like this, the way you dress, that's going to be better and accentuate the right things and the wrong things and make sure you know your body type. And this is a type of bathing suit you should wear if you have, I mean, it's just endless. It's endless. A hundred percent agree. And I definitely don't think that, like I talked to Brie about this on the podcast and I've Mm -hmm. talked to um Katie about this like in real life not on the podcast um about yeah have you ever invited her to talk about it on the podcast no I haven't actually but I'm sure like she'd be like and basically she is an expert like I it's like based in her therapy like it's her focus Mm -hmm. um might be cool if she's willing yeah totally um but I've talked to her about it and just like really being okay with the word you know, like fat, which people hate to use, but I will just use it in this context and say that if you're already somebody who is decided on by society that you are fat, like, okay, you're a fat person. There's definitely different realms in fat, but I think that like for most people, like for instance, for me, like I Mm -hmm. consider myself to be fat. I think that for me though, I'm like, a like a smaller size of fat person Mm -hmm. if you're thin already I think that the options for being thinner are so much more endless and I think it just gives you a lot of pressure like you were saying yeah there's always right yeah like it's something or to maintain I think yeah and the reality is this is a losing battle because as you get older you just can't like there are certain limitations and there are just certain limitations based on your body type yeah that you can never reach Totally. Right. And then you're also dealing with like a specific body type that is the desired body type, whatever that is in culture. Sometimes it's really thin and like no boobs in an ass. Mm -hmm. And now like boobs in an ass are sort of back. Mm -hmm. But like you're dealing with that image. And a lot of those people are altering their bodies in order to make that possible. And then you're also dealing with altered images. Yeah. um, As well. So it's, it's a really losing battle. Totally. So I think that's why I think that I find that my friends who are thin, I feel like it's Mm -hmm. so hard. Like, it's hard for everybody. But I feel like what what I'm noticing with them is that it's just like, when you already are entering into that, like, I'm going to use quotations that like prime body target, according to society, I think then it's like this effort to be like, even more perfect like Mm -hmm. you know can I have a super flat stomach can my thighs not touch which was like a huge thing I'm sure it still is um yeah you know can I have Michelle Obama arms can I have like you know my collarbone it's just so endless it's so much work um that I like I that's one of the things that I've been noticing is like the people who talk to me about their body the most are my friends that I would consider to be thin um And so it just goes to show like to other people who are like, if I could just get to being, you know, a size eight, Mm -hmm. I think that's like, like, I think that's like a goal for people. I don't know. But yeah, I think get a certain size. Yeah, like I might be to a size eight or a size this, whatever. I think then it just becomes something else. And I follow this girl on Instagram who does like, um, Oh, this like generic version of Weight Watchers. It's called like I Track Bites, and she mm-hmm. lost over a hundred pounds. Uh, she was like two fifty five, and now she's one fifty five. And she did it in about sixteen months, and she got a lot of followers from it. Um, people who wanted to do it, and now she's entered into just a maintenance phase, and she's just like eating regularly, like you know, not necessarily working out every day, but like going out. Oh, and people or, are giving her a hard time. People are giving her a hard time and they're like leaving her page because 
they're like 155 pounds. Like you should still want to lose more. Like it's like, it's never good enough. So oh my gosh. And I kind of feel like that kind of goes towards this girl's comment about her mom is like, what is the point of even bringing this up? Right. Cause she still feels. Yeah. Bad. That's what makes me the most sad mm-hmm. about like hearing this is that it's like, Oh, well, what's the point? It's just yeah. going to hurt her. It's like, what about you dude? Yeah, totally. It's going to hurt her. Like, and you know, I already saw it, so it's just gonna make it awkward. And she, and but she did say she's like, I have my own issue surrounding body, and mm-hmm. obviously, like, where did that come from? It's like little comments that you're making to kids when they're younger that make them, you know, feel bad. And it's so rare to meet somebody who is just never talking about a diet, never talking about losing weight. It's just. I've not, I have yet to meet a woman in 33 years of life, 32. I'm not going to be like you and give myself an extra year. uh I'm only 32. So yeah, in 32 and a half years of life, I've never met a woman who has just like, just, it's not on their brain. It's always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking about it. I actually think I don't talk about it a lot, but that doesn't mean anything (laughs) because I definitely have talked about it. Yeah. Like you probably talk about it the least. Um, But I mean, you don't ever, I've never heard you talk derogatively about yourself, but just being like, Oh, Oh, I definitely have because you've made comments about like, Jamie, you have like an ideal body type and I don't relate to that at all. That's true. Remember? So, but I don't, but you're right. I don't talk about a lot. Or you mentioned like, Oh, you watch your diet, which I watch my diet around other people. I hide. (laughs) I'm telling you, I realize that. I realized that because I said it to a friend the other day. Like, I actually think I eat healthier when I'm around others. Yeah. But, it's so interesting. But if you're not surra- always. But, yeah. But if yeah. you're surrounded by people who are, you know, eating really, really healthfully, which I mean, honestly, between the both of us, we know lots of people who eat right. very healthily. It does feel a little bad if you're like, can I have cheese on the side of my fries, please? Right. Um, no. Th- yeah. I think, so I think that is part of it. Um, is who I surround myself with, mm-hmm. which isn't bad. I'm no, not, it's great to be surrounded by people because it's like, yeah, and in your to mind. kind of push you in. Right, right. So I don't necessarily look at that as negative, although I do kind of look at that a little bit like, well, obviously I'm influenced by other people. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. I, well, I mean, I think we all are. And I definitely, I was talking to another friend recently mm-hmm. about like, so there, you know, I used to have eating issues myself. So I talk to, and I like occasionally yeah. still do, let me just say that. Oh, but, yeah. Again, we I think we all do. Like, I yeah. definitely have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was talking to a friend about that, and they were starting to feel like they were having some issues surrounding food mm-hmm. and body image. And I was like, oh, well, you know, definitely talk to someone about it. You don't want it to get too far. And then I was like, you know, how did that happen? Right? Like, I've mm-hmm. known this person for a while. I'm like, you know, this is new. Like, what happened? And it was because they were like, well, I became friends with somebody else who was like extremely thin. Mm, and, you yeah. know, I all made, takes. Yeah. And it made me compare myself to them. And so it started, and, you know, I, I, I was never being as thin as that person. And then when we would go out, guys would hit on them. And so it's yeah. just this whole thing. Mm. And mind you, this person is, is very thin, like, not in a sick, like, I think I know who you're talking about. And it's just like very mm -hmm. sad that this is, and it's not the other person's fault either. No. It's not like she's. No, because some people just, I mean, it's just like we all have different body types. Totally. And yet there's only one that's honored. Yes. But men, you know, a man can, you know, you have shows like According to Jim where you have this big fat man who's with this hot woman Mm -hmm. and it happens in real life too though that's the sad thing because they're just because it well it's because they're telling us that that's okay like they're like it's fine but I mean honestly though if you see situations though for instance I can't think of anyone who's like a curvier actress now I'm trying to think if I can think of any good examples but of the other way around you mean right like if we saw that in a tv show like would we even think that that was like realistic yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I've seen it the other way around in real life, but I, yeah, it's it's so interesting. We can't think of one in media, isn't it? Right. Like, it just would be like, oh, like, because I think if you saw a movie like that, you'd be like, no way that guy mm-hmm. would be with her. Okay. I just thought of one. Parks and Rec. Um, oh, did you watch, watch that show? Okay. No. Yeah. There was a woman, Don, Donna Meagle, who um, she weighed more than her boyfriend who she ended up with in the end who was played by Michael Keegan Key who you know is pretty yes, I slim. Do know. Yes, yes, totally. 
Yeah. But now and that was actually, I remember commenting like, this is really great. I love that they're doing this. <laughs> and then did you feel like, were people like, oh, this is like not realistic or. I like- mean, I, you know, didn't hear anything, but okay. I wouldn't be surprised if people did. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's usually the messaging that I hear is like, or like if it is happening, like. Yeah. Um, and I actually, I probably thought it. I'll be honest with you. I probably thought well, that. See, that's like a good honest share. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. People- it's like, this doesn't like, does, well. I think I think what I would have thought is like this is not realistic for what media usually does but mm-hmm. I love that they're doing this. This could be happening in real life but like this isn't real. I don't know if what I'm saying is making any sense. Yeah, right you're now. like I could <laughs> see this happening in real life but media does not want us to think that this is real right, life so, so this I'm is surprised weird. to see this. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yes. Um, yeah, I could see that. I, yeah. I just think it's like so sad though because like I I do see so many things where it's like an older guy oh and like I posted this too and I didn't post it Mm -hmm. I shared this with um I was talking to Julie and I was uh there was this funny thing on Instagram it was like which couple do you think has like has a bigger age gap and so there was a picture of Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds Mm -hmm. and it was compared to I can't remember which one of the Jonas brothers but like one of them's oh Jonas Nick and uh Priyanka Priyanka yeah okay yeah so it's like which one is the greater age difference so of course I'm like well it's Priyanka and Joe or whichever yeah exactly it's it is Blake and Ryan Reynolds yeah they're like 10 years or something or like more yeah and Nick and Priyanka are like five i think it's no it's ten it's ten but still it seems like it it literally like my brain your mind just blow like well because like in my mind i'm like blake lively and ryan reynolds is totally normal priyanka is robbing the cradle why yeah does my brain think that but i'm being honest that's no you're right because i've dated younger men before and it's like oh mrs robinson but like you would never when i was dating a guy seven years older than me it was like oh yeah oh this is fine yeah and that bothers me in online dating where guys who are like 10 or 15 years older are like hey and i'm just like i don't want to be your like your caregiver well and then there's like scott disnick who's dating um Whatever yes. the hell her name yes. is. Well, you know, like one of his multiple. Sophie, no, he's 37. Sophie and, Bush, right? Uh, no, she's Harry Hamlin's daughter. So she's Amelia Hamlin. Wait, he's dating someone new now then. Oh, yeah. So, okay, he was dating Sophia Ritchie. Yeah, um, Sophia Ritchie. Thank you. Yeah, for years. But she was like 21 when he was like 32 or something. He, she was like, she was 19 when they started dating. And oh, he was like, she was even younger. Yeah, and he was like 35. And then they dated for a few years. She turned 21 and then he broke up with her because I'm like, maybe she's oh too God. old now. And then he started Fucking... dating Amelia Hamlin, who is literally 19. And he is truly 37. And wow. He has a and child I who's was 10. Seriously like thinking he had grown. I no. don't even know why. And I mean, honestly, I'm not trying to pass any judgment and everyone's like, Hollywood's different, but I'm like, is it that different? Like that much different? 19. She can't even go for I a mean, drink. And you break up, he broke up with her when she turned 21. What the fuck? I mean, I'm sure it wasn't because of that, but it Come looks on. weird. It looks Come weird. On. Well, you know what I think it is? Like when she got older, she started res- asking for more. Truly. Uh, yeah. Like in the show, you could see, like, I don't know if you watched the last season. I didn't no. watch the whole thing, but I watched like a couple no. episodes. And when they broke up, it was because she was like, listen, I don't want to share you with Courtney. And everyone's like, oh my God, how dare she? And I'm like, oh, no, actually, yes. that's you like a valid that. point. Mm-hmm. Like, that's mm-hmm. a valid point. It's not to say, like, I'm a stepmother. I oh. am not saying Mike should never talk to his ex about their child. But like, why are y'all going on vacation? Can I come? Like, that's weird. If I'm your serious living girlfriend, why are you and your ex going on vacation together without me? I, I know that some people, that might be a controversial opinion. You can at me about it. Mm. You, but I just think, like, if we're living no, together. No, I totally get that. Then we're all in this kind of blended family. Like, I think I should come. Like, I, I or at least be invited. I may not want to come. But, yeah. And now, like, Courtney's dating Travis. And it's like, she's completely cut Scott off. But he was never willing to do that mm. for Sophie. I like wonder how that respect. happened that she decided like was that something I just that... think it was like a like I mean they still talk or whatever but I just think yeah but not that... not like they're doing joint trips and exactly. like they were before yeah, yeah. I think Travis is like her love and it's a serious relationship it's mm. serious 
Mm -hmm. So that's why I think. It's so interesting because it, like, when you hear it, you're like, wow. But it's like, yeah, it actually makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's crazy enough that it might actually work. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's like, <laughs> I'm going to totally be open to hearing this. I like, people are super obsessed about it. It's kind of like how they're obsessed with Megan. What, uh, I can't remember what her last box, Megan Fox and like MG. Oh, and Machine Megan, Gun Kelly. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. like obsessed with that. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like I could So they're less. still, I was curious. Yeah. I have yeah, a they're still together. There. They're still together. Yeah. And Brian Austin Green is still sad. No, he's not sad. He's, he's dating now someone. dating like some gorgeous dancer. 19 year old. She's a whole adult. <laughs> she's an adult that runs. Oh my gosh. Own. Yeah. She's a whole girl. Can we up. also talk about how Trevor Noah is dating somebody older than him? Ooh, who is he dating? Um, He's at so least last such time a I, dreamy, but oh my dreamy, gosh. dreamy thing. I Wait, love now him. I have to look this up because last time I checked, because he's like 36 or 37. And he was dating a 40 year old woman. And I, I was that. like, I fucking love you even more. And I hate that you're dating somebody. I just feel like um, he is just, there's no woman I think that would be like Trevor Noah is not my type. You do I, lie. Seriously. You're lying. Of course yeah, he is. He's so lying. Of course he is. So lying. Okay. Wait, I'm trying to look this up. Um, shit, I'm not finding it. Come well, on. you can tell us next episode if you find it by then. I think like maybe we should just do a whole pop culture episode. We'll both find some stuff and we'll tell mm-hmm. the listeners. I think no, okay, fun. I found it. Oh, Minka good. Kelly. Oh, I Trevor's Noah's so ex girlfriend. They split up. Yes, That's okay. <laughs> he's available. He's flipping in the, the DMs. Market. No, but yeah. but he she was. I still give him props. Like who knows why they broke. They dated for a really long time. Oh, wait, they bought no, a house together says, too. No, I'm saying it says appear they re- to rekindle. So oh, that right. maybe we're not sure. We, we don't seven, know. They might have re- rekindled. Jury's out. We'll find out. We'll, we're yeah, on the hunt, y'all. but I'm pretty sure that she is older. Um, he's she's 37. Beautiful. She's 40. Yep. Gorgeous. She's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I guess you still have to be a young 40. Uh, I mean, I think <laughs> the thing about all 40 year olds nowadays, like think about the fact that like Heidi's past 40. How young is she? Like, I don't think who's 40... past 40. Heidi. You mean Heidi Klum? I mean, our Heidi. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. I'll, I like, I think. I'll, and yeah, also Heidi Klum. Heidi Klum, too. I think all 40, like, I think 40 now is just very, very different. Yes. Although I think that is somewhat, as you age, you find beauty different than you would when you were younger. Do you know what I mean? Like, true. I think when I was in my 20s and I looked at people in their late 30s, I was like, "Eh." but now I look at people in their 20s and I'm like, yeah, I think people in their 30s are actually prettier. So I do think some of it is like. Because we have the money to take care of ourselves. That's why. Maybe, maybe, but I just like, think you look at beauty differently too. And like, yeah. I mean, I personally just think that we all like my, like I meet people who I'm just like, oh my God, you're like thinking about the way that like, if you ever watch Rugrats, like uh, <laughs> to- Tommy Pickle's parents were supposed to be my age. <laughs> These people are fucking ancient and it's not even a difference of, I'm like, why are you portraying 33 this way? You're a liar. This mm. is gr- ridiculous. Um, I can barely make myself a fucking coffee drink in the morning. Le- well, I mean, I guess probably <laughs> if I did have a, a child, though, maybe that I just like and also ran like a home daycare because I can't remember why all those kids were always there. But whatever. Anyway, it was a great call. Fun episode. Person who wrote this question. I'm sorry we got derailed. Your issue. Yeah, is serious, I was going to say. But- um, so, I mean, that's I think that the most sad part is that she's not even sure if it's worth it and it's just going to hurt her mom. Um, I think I you should know. talk to her. Yeah. Just to I say, mean, you like, have you to know. decide, of course, like you have to pick your battles. However, it does sound like this might eat away at you if you don't say something. And maybe this is part of what makes the relationship better is you yeah. sharing like, you know, and having boundaries around about. like, yeah, like this is not okay. And like, it's hurtful. You know, honestly, I don't even think I have a body, like an issue, like a weight issue and you saying I'm pregnant. We're just, you know, that's. You yeah. Know. And I because obviously me, but her mom hurtful. has her own body image oh, issues sure. totally. and that she's putting on her daughter. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. yeah. If that's our advice. I mean, I would say, you know, listen to yourself and like how you feel. Right. But I don't think. And also, mom, 
don't make your iPad accessible so your daughter can read your messages. Well, she was delete giving her messages. the yeah. She was giving her the iPad, so definitely delete your messages. Yeah, talking yeah. shit About her before you give it to her. Thanks. Right. <laughs> like, just if you're gonna say shitty things, like don't let it get back to your daughter. <laughs> totally. Yeah. That sounds Jeez. shitty to say, but but it's the truth. Get your shit together, mom. Don't be an asshole or like be less of one. Um, okay, that's all I've got for today. Anything else from you? No. Awesome. Well, y'all, have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. That's when this will come out. And we will talk to you next week. Sounds good. We will. Okay, bye. Bye.